Hello everyone, welcome again. Uh, so this is the third and the last part of the pointers in C++ tutorial. So in this part, we will learn how to access each individual byte of the uh, variables. For example, if we have integer or floats, they definitely contain more than one byte. But due to the limitations of our communication interfaces like I2Cs or even the, to store it in the AEP room, they might need to access only to one byte per time. So we cannot process more than one byte, so we need to access each individual byte of the variable. Okay, so for example, need to send data to the I2C and by mean of data integer or float. Okay, which they are more than one byte to the I2C or need to store the data in the AP room, which again the data I mean or I refer to integer or floats. Okay. So we will learn today how we can access each individual byte of these data types where the contents of two or more bytes. Okay, so uh, in this example, we will uh, define our example. Let's say we have integer first, integer x equal to, let's say, 100 now. Okay, integer x equal to 100, and let's define or de initialize our serial, serial dot begin, and first of all, let's just bring the value of x, okay, serial, It's very equal to this and serial the print line As this one we will print X and we need a divider print line with just separate okay so I already connect the Arduino to the laptop and let's upload the code and see what we will get Okay, so first of all, here we go. We just got the value of x variable. We just declared is 100. Okay, so let's continue. So to access this 100, again, since it's integer, so we have two bytes here. Okay, so in order to access each individual byte, I will declare a pointer. This pointer will be byte of mm, PTR okay this pointer is just a byte and now we will see how we can use this byte to access this two bytes variable okay so now after here I need to access the variable x by the pointer we made just now okay so ptr pointer if you remember before that we use only n sign and the variable name to get the address of the variable but this time we are not assigned to the whole variable address 
we assign only to one byte. So we need to read a byte of that variable. This one we assign to or uh, reference, or how can I say, we point to the first byte address exactly. Okay, this code will point to the first byte of the of the variable. Okay. So now, if I want to display the variable or print the variable uh, value, so not the variable, the pointer value. I mean the point, the first part, the first byte value. So let's copy this. Okay. So now I will say. The first byte value equal to pointer etr. Okay, this is the first, uh, what they call the first value, and for sure, don't forget me to add the star before. So let's up the, upload this. Okay, then good. Okay. And here we go. You see now, since the value of the first byte is is less than 255, because we know one byte equal to 8 bit, 8 bit maximum 255. So since the value, the overall value of the variable is less than 255, definitely the first five, the first byte will be exactly the same, no no different. But let's say let's change, let's say to change it to 400, 400 more than 255. So they will be an overflow to the second byte or to the next byte. So definitely now, here we go. Definitely now not exactly same because this one only the first byte. Let's see the second byte. Okay, how to access the second byte? Because here we assign, we read or refer or point to only one byte of this variable, which this variable is integer and it's uh, store how many bytes? Two. Okay, so how can I read the, the next byte? I can do this. The second byte is uh, I need to increase this by one. Plus plus. Oh, sorry, it should be like this here. Yeah. Okay, so now I can see the two bytes at the same time. Here we go. This is the first byte. This is the second byte. And maybe for you guys, make no sense. The first and second byte, nothing to do with 400. But let's calculate it. Okay, so I will open the Excel sheet from here. If you remember, we have one. Let's take, uh, sorry, let's take this one first. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this is the second byte. Let me put it in this color. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the first byte. So this is the first byte. This is the second byte. Okay, so this is the first and second. The first byte, if you remember, The first byte was 144, and the second byte is what? 
is only one. So sorry, this one will be the second. Uh, sorry, this one will be the first. And this one will be our second. Okay. Okay, so one and one for four. So this one combined, so this one one for four. And this one will be one. Okay, let me open the calculator. And here I will arrange from one. I'm just open the binary two, four, eight, sixteen. 64 to 8 256 and 1024 and etc okay so now let me bring the calculator. So number one definitely is one, zero, 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 zero. That's why I didn't continue because all zeros. Now let's calculate 44. So the 44, uh, sorry, the 144, so one, four, four in binary equal to this so we have one zero zero one zero 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 okay so now let's calculate uh, equal to this since we have one here plus this plus another one here yep that's all so here we go we have our 400 okay when we use this method we can recalculate our final value this is the final value based on the based on the two bytes first bytes and the second bytes okay so here we go, we got another, uh, the final, the final value, okay? So now we know and we have idea where this 144 and one come from. Okay, so now, since we have these two bytes, so these two bytes are the variable that we can send, receive, and do all our process, okay? So let's, let's, de let's declare another bytes, two bytes. Uh, let's say byte A, comma B. So these two bytes, I'll assign them to the points down here, to the pointers. So I'll say A equal to this pointer. Okay, and B equal to the other point, I mean to the same point after we increase by one. Okay, because here I increase by one, so I go to the next pointer of the integer. Okay, so now let me just copy this. Copy this. Okay. So the first byte which is A value and B value. So now I'll just print A, print B, take out this, take out this, no need, take out this, no need, okay. So now I have A and B, let's see. Uh, 
here we go so this is a this is b okay guys so this a and b now they are the two bytes of the integer x so these two bytes i can do whatever i need with them for example i save in the ap room i send to the i2c do spi process whatever i want even to the uirt then when i receive it on the second node or this on or the destination i can combine them again and do or complete my process okay so now i have these two bytes let's say i already received it let's say now here i will send a and b bytes to the i2c or store them in the eep room okay then after all this then now uh, receive them at the destination node. Okay, when I receive them at destination node, definitely I'll receive A and B. Okay, so now let's say at the destination I have another another integer to read back the two points or the two bytes. Sorry. So let's say integer y, y. Okay, so now integer y that will combine this a and b and I should get back the 400. Okay, so, okay, integer y. Now, in, in, in this node or in this destination node, I will assign again the pointer, my same pointer, or even I can define another pointer, but since I have the pointer, I will, I will make use of the same. Uh, so I will take the pointer equal to, again, only one byte of, now I will change to Y, okay? Again, pointer will, bite, will point to one byte of Y. So now any process, any changes I will do to the pointer, it will be stored where? Stored in Y, exactly. So here I got PTR pointer equal to A star pointer plus plus and star pointer equal to p okay so here i assign or point to the first byte of integer y by using this command then since i would assign to the first one so the first one will take a directly increase by one then assign to b so now the final value of y let's say oh sorry this one should be here after we receive here we assume is the same code so the value the final y value equal to y directly because we already assign it and let's see what happened Voila, magic. We got exactly the same value as we send it, okay? And for sure, we can change it. Let's say, change it to 4,400, for example. Let's see if can handle. Dun, 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 update, done, ah, beautiful, okay? So again, here we have integer, definitely more than one byte. We divide it into two bytes using its pointer, then assign it to another byte. So we do whatever process we need with these two bytes. Then when we receive them, we can use the pointer again to combine them again to the original number. Okay. As we did here. So again, 
we have this is the integer that we send, integer we receive, the two bytes we process, and the pointer we use. Okay, so first of all, since we point or we use this pointer to point to x, so any process we do here will be reflect to or from x. Okay, since we use this pointer to point to the first byte of x, so any process we do below will be reflect to or from x. For example, here we are reading from x. You see, we are reading from x. We take from the pointer, which is referred to x, take from the pointer that refer to x or point to x, assign it to a. Again, read from the pointer that refer to x again, plus 1, assign it to b. So now a and b referring to the first and second byte of x. We do our process, whatever we want to do. Then when we receive, we receive two, boy, two bytes. We are not sure these two bytes, what they are or they belong to what. But to combine them and put them back again at the original, uh, original uh, shape that they sent to, I need to use another pointer that point to the, my new variable, my new integer. Again, only one byte. Now I will store back the first byte inside my pointer that it's point to the y integer. Again, I store the first bytes that we receive into the pointer, into the first pointer that point to the first byte of my integer. Then I increase pointer my pointer by one. This means I will refer to the second byte of my integer. I store the second byte and at the end I can read y directly okay so with this we have finished with this the first example hands-on example on the pointers okay so in the next example we will learn more on to how to use this pointer to address a float with the i2c or uh, EEP room, uh, EEP room, uh, the storing or reading data for me. Okay, so stay tuned for it. Okay, so here we will take the last example about pointers in this tutorial series. Okay, so in this tutorial or in this uh, hands-on example we will take a float variable and we will try to store it or transfer it using the i2c <clears throat> then we can uh, reconstruct it again by using the pointers okay so uh, for example we already talked in the last hands-on example about the integer now we will change to float and also the received one or the one that will reconstruct it will be also a float. Uh, this one, let's say, is 4.43, any number. Okay, we should process this, chop it first into how many bytes? Do you remember the float, how many bytes? Yes, which is equal to 4 bytes. So we need to divide this into four bytes then when we got the bytes we can process them then we can reconstruct the four bytes at the receiver side or at the destination or the of our system okay so since we have four bytes remember here we have two bytes because we have integer before now we need to add more C and D, but this one only for example, no need to define more bytes. Actually, this one just to make it easy for you, you can directly work with the float itself. Uh, sorry, with the pointer itself. Okay, the pointer will be maintained the same. Okay, so now let's print. Uh, sorry, let's uh, upload this code and see what we will get. For sure, we will get the x value. Now it's float. Okay, done. For sure the rest will be wrong okay so this is the x value you see the final value y is wrong why because 
in the previous example we read only two see only a and b but actually now we have four bytes that's why we get wrong and this one only the first and second bytes the rest are not ready yet okay so now let's work with it uh, here will be same we read only one byte of x which is the float no problem so the first byte value is this now i need the second and third let's copy this one So the first, second, third, and the fourth here. So the first will be A pointer, then we increase the pointer, then B. Here we increase the pointer again for... This is for the four. I guess should be okay. Mm, this one no need. Because the fourth will be the last one. Okay, so this is the first, second, B here will be C and D. Okay, so pointer will take the first byte of X, which is four bytes. I will bring the first byte first, at the same time assign it to A then i will increase the pointer by one i mean i will shift to the second byte of four bytes of the float bring it out assign to b then i shift again to the third byte and print it out and assign to c and sorry yes i need to shift again to the fourth one yep so then i will bring a and b and now i need to increase this to c and d so this is c this is d first second third and fourth okay let's upload our code it's really good practice to check your code every now and then whenever you have small changes then you check your code to see you are on the correct way okay you see here these are the four bytes and these are the four bytes that we store in our bytes this this we access it using the pointer this one access it using the bytes that we create okay so now here we assume we do whatever process we need then we come here uh, you see now, we get wrong y value should be also 4.43, but wrong because even though a and b, c, d, all is correct, but here we read only two to assign it to y. Okay, so let me correct this one also, the first a, b, c, and d. Okay, so now it a, b, I need c, and d, a, b, c, and d. D and I need to increase my pointer okay so now I expect to read exactly the same pointer that we send the first time here we go this is what we send this is what we receive this one we send we chop it to four bytes according to its size we process it then we receive these four bytes then we reconstruct again 4.43 okay beautiful so by using this way guys you can uh, process any data type as long as you know how many bytes it constant okay so now for example i can add on let's say i add on the eep room this eep room is uh is built in in the arduino ide system this is to store the data inside the EP room. So let's say now I want to store the, the, the ABCD. Actually, to make it more practical, I don't need ABCD. I can take out this. Uh, take out this. 
from here, no need ABCD, I can directly use the EEP room code, okay? So I can say A, I directly store inside the EEP room, EEP room. Be careful guys, here I really uh, encourage you to use update instead of write. We can use write, but the write will be always overwrite, overwrite, whatever being there inside the EEP room. And since we have very limited writing cycles in the EEP room, I advise you and suggest you go through the EEP room management video uh, to prolong the EEP room life cycle, I suggest to use update instead. This update function, it will read the value of the bytes inside the EEP room. If the value is same as the new value that's been assigned, it will not write, only if the, the old value is different, okay? So I will update in the first byte, in the first location, I will update my pointer. Okay. And same goes to here for the B. Same goes for the C and same goes for the D. But this one, one will be two. This one will be three and this one will be four, okay? So now I already store it in the AP room. Then in this AP room, for example, I do which, whichever process I want. Then here I will read it back from the AP room, okay? So here I will say AP room, AP room dot read. I will read from one because one is the first byte I've been stored before. So this is one, two, three, and four. Four, three, two, one. And as you can see here, we take the first pointer, take the first byte, increase the pointer by one. We store the second one, increase by one, third, and so on. Okay, so this is the final Y value. Let's see. Okay, so update done. Beautiful. You see now, we have the original value. We chop it into four bytes. We process it. We even store it in the EAP room. Then we read from the EAP room again, and we reconstruct it again to be exactly the same point. Okay, so you can see here, there is no link exactly, direct link between Y and X, except the pointers. So this is the powerful of the pointers that can point to individual bytes of the data type or your variable so you can access it process it and then reconstruct it again okay guys so now by the end of this tutorial i believe if you remember the first the first uh part of the video i have promised you that when where is my pointer? Okay, I promise you that at the end of the tutorial, you will understand what is this command is. And I believe now you know what is it, okay? By looking at this code. You see, I have my pointer, I will take one byte, or I will reference to one byte of this variable, then I will increase by one, which is same goes to here. So this one, I'm addressing one byte, which is this, this is the address. This is the address. Uh, let me have razor. Then pen. So this is the address of a memory location, any memory location inside the SRAM. And this is the value that I will assign it or store it inside this memory location. Okay, 
this value is one byte that being decided by here okay again this is address of a memory location and this is the value value okay so i hope you got a complete idea of how powerful is the pointer how we can use them to arrange our code how we can use them to enhance our memory and optimize our code to uh, to release more memory location to help us improve our code okay so thank you very much i i hope to see you soon with the new tutorials if you have any questions please let me know i'll try to answer it as soon as possible thank you very much and have a nice day